You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody, that music means it is not Education Wednesday. No, (laughs) we're mixing things up yet again here on the network, coming at you live for Education Tuesday, a very special (laughs) Education Tuesday. In fact, it's doubly special because all you cool kids in the Secret Club get a double dose of options boot camp in your ear holes right now as we speak, everybody else has to wait a week for that second hit, that second dose of the old OBC. Where can you go to learn more and join that secret club for future episodes? Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, or if you're really cool, slash secret club. But don't tell anybody about that second one. That's just for the cool kids out there. It's my name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the network upon which so many of you are binging. I want to remind all of you out there, if you're just listening to Boot Camp, there's a fair number of you who just want to mainline the Boot Camp. We get it. But hey, you're missing out on nearly a dozen other shows, usually a couple of shows hitting you a day. So if you want more options living in your life, make sure you upgrade to the full kit and caboodle out there. And of course, if you're listening on demand, all we ask is that if you like what you hear, your rate and review so all the, the legion, the plethora of new people can continue to discover the show. Just like Juvel8 did this week. Juvel8 says, I just started listening from episode one. Oh, welcome to you there, Juvel. He says, got to say I'm learning quite a bit. I also picked up Dan's book on the Greeks, and I'm learning there as well. Five stars. Well, Juvel8 is clearly a winner, a discerning individual, and probably a very handsome fellow, or indeed a very beautiful lady. <laughs> whatever the case may be out there. Thanks for those comments there, Jubal8. If you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. And he did invoke my cohort. Let me now welcome him on. I am joined, of course, as always, by the one, the only, Daniel Passarelli the Third Esquire, a.k.a. the founder of Market Taker Mentoring, what the cool kids call him to him, and also the author of one or two or half a dozen options-oriented tomes Mr. Passarelli the Third Esquire, welcome back to the program, sir. It's good to be back, Mark. Um, really, really looking forward to this episode today. I think about that love from Jubal. We even went out and got your book, sir. He's slumming it with the Greeks. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for picking it up, and I hope it serves you well. And Dan, you know what always serves us well is your question of the week. What do you got in store for us this week, sir? Well, you know, one thing that I'm often asked is what is my favorite option strategy, my go-to option strategy, the best option strategy? You know, I'm always getting asked questions like this. I know. It's ratio iron condor swaps. You said it a million times here on the show, so you don't have to repeat it. (laughs) Right. Um, And, well, you know, like one thing that we have said, uh, I think we probably both said on the show a million times, like, there is no one best, best strategy. Like the reason there's different types of strategies is that 
They all serve a different purpose. But I will tell you one thing. Time spreads are, I would say, one of the most powerful strategies because one of the main things that I that I teach our student traders is to get edge on every one of your trades. And you should seek to do that with all options positions. But because of the nature of time spreads where you're buying one option, selling another in two different time horizons, you're really, really able to take good advantage of that, um, of, of volatility and, and, and a number of other things. They are some really, really powerful spreads. And uh, yeah, I, I guess, if I, I mean, if I had to pick a favorite, that would be it. So if I can read between the lines, Dan, are you saying perhaps it's time for a little bit of the old options drills with time spreads? Is that what you're saying, sir? You know, Mark, I think that's not a bad idea at all. Well, in boots, time for our favorite pastime, option drills. We're going to take the strategies learned during the show and teach you how they can be employed to achieve a specific objective. Do you hear me? Yes, sir! All right, everybody, welcome to a little bit of the old options drills where we break down some options, concept, or strategy, or technique, and kind of explain how you can utilize it in your own portfolios. And Dan, you know, I'm kind of with you. Your listeners, or I should say your your mentees are asking you questions about time spreads. It does seem like you could just sense it. You could smell it in the air when it's time spread time. It usually comes around on this show at least about once a year. And, you know, we, it's been almost a year since I think we've really done a deep dive into time spreads on the show. Fortunately for you listeners, we have nearly a decade worth of shows as Jubal and others are, dis- are discovering for themselves. So if you want to go back a little bit into some of the archives, you can do some deep dives into time spreads as well. But Dan, you know, it just seems like the time is right, pun intended, to do a bit of a refresher on time spreads, sir. Do you concur? Mm-hmm. The time is always right for that, Mark. The time is always right for time spreads. We just got this question last episode as well. This one came in from Mark McGee. He said he was trying to learn about calendars. They're pretty tricky so far. I think I can handle the use case for the basic long calendar, but he had questions about calendars versus diagonals. A bunch of other people have been hitting us up with Similar refrains, similar questions out there. So it does seem a good time to dive back into those waters. Again, I'm going to do a bit of refresher on time spreads and calendars today and diagonals, of course. Uh, If you want more, again, there are legions of episodes in the archives all about this topic, listeners, from many different perspectives. I have said it before. I will say it again. This is where kind of the rubber meets the road for a lot of traders. This is a more of a 201 or, dare I say it, a 301 type options concept. So if you're not quite ready for the time spread, it's okay. You'll get there in time. This is maybe just a good introductory episode. Again, I know we have legions of new listeners all the time who haven't uh, haven't had a chance to check out the archives maybe yet. So listen to this. If you're not too intimidated, then you go back and start listening to those and you'll work your way. Up. Start off with your basic trades first and then then you can work your way up when you're ready to the time spread. So Dan, let's start there. You just said it's kind of your favorite strategy of all time. Why is that? Why are you so enamored by your basic time spreads? You know, Mark, um, the thing with times, okay, so look, so like with any option strategy, you've got, you've got your delta that affects your P&L, your theta, your vega uh, rho, which we're going to, you know, end up having to talk a lot more about in the, in the coming months. And, and like, really that's it. Like, Everything, like anything else you can imagine on how you can make or lose money is just a subset of one of those. And so, like with time spreads, we can trade them directionally, uh, you know, just a, a pure directional time spread uh, or, or as a diagonal. We are always making money based on time. The trade-off there is, is gamma, so we look for a certain type of stock setup. Um, but then, like, the the real, real power that comes into play that really doesn't come in as much with other strategies is the Vega component, uh, the term structure of volatility. Um, and I don't want to get too far a- ahead of ourselves here. We can probably elaborate a lot more on this later. But just being able to basically buy an underpriced option and sell an overpriced option 
at the same time? Like, how do you not lock in an edge doing that? If you're always doing that on your time spreads, I mean, in the long run, I don't see how you cannot make money. Unless you're doing ratio iron condor swap stand. Then that's just printing money. But that's a conversation <laughs> for another day. All right, basic yeah. time spreads. What are we talking about here? I know there's a lot of new people all the time. You may be saying, what the heck are these guys talking about? So let's walk you through some examples here. Your most common, most frequently used time spread. You go out to XYZ, everyone's favorite name. You look out and you say, you know, I want to I trade a time spread out here. Your traditional way these are usually structured is you go out, let's say, two months and let's look at the calls because everyone usually uses calls for that. You can do puts too, but calls seem to be the most predominant use case out there. You say, you know, that two month out call is trading for about a buck. Again, you're talking at the money call now. These are at the money calls. So that two month out at the money call trading for about a buck, you're going to turn around and sell that same front month now at the money call. And in our example is trading for 50 cents. So you can see Right off the bat, one of the one of the benefits of doing this is that you cut your outlay in half. Your outlay for this trade is now 50 cents. Now, a lot of people, when they think of spreads, they think of basic verticals, right? You buy your at-the-money call, you sell your 10% out-of-the-money call, whatever the case may be. Take the difference between the two. That's the cost of your spread. And they can understand that because if a call spread, you know, all the underlying has to do is move up. And you make money on that spread. Put spread, vice versa. All the underlying has to do is drop. And you make money if you bought that spread. Time spreads, they're not that simple. And that's what kind of Dan was just alluding to. Now you have Vega components. Now you have term structure components. And you have two. You have two effectively contrasting things going on at the same time, which can be a little bit off-putting to people because you're buying an at-the-money call two months out now. So usually when you buy a call, what do you want to happen, right? You want this thing to take off, your long premium, your long ball. You want this underlying to explode, in this case, to the upside. Now you've gone ahead and sold an at-the-money call one month ahead of that. So now what happens when you sell a call? Usually you want this thing to not go anywhere or at the very least stay below that strike that you sold the call at. So you have two what would seem to be on the surface, Dan, completely opposite juxtaposing positions. That's what seems to flummox a lot of people. How do you come to grips with that? And how do you teach your students about that? How do they process and manage two positions that are effectively polar opposites of each other, sir? You know, with time spreads, um, th th there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, yes, they're polar opposites. You have to look at them that way. That said, they're one position and you have to look at it that way. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you, I always, I, I think we both always encourage people to look at the Greeks. It's extremely important. You will not succeed in options if you don't watch your Greeks on every trade. But just looking at the net Greeks on a time spread um is is the one thing that is very different about this strategy. We can look at the net delta, and that's going to tell us, hey, you know, if the delta's positive, it's got to go up. If delta's negative, it's got to go down. We can look at the theta, and whatever the theta is, that's how much we're going to make it on time passing. But if we look at the net vega, it's very, very misleading because, like you said, Mark, there one of the ways we have to look at it is we do have to look at it as two separate positions, one with a bullish implied volatility stance and one with a bearish implied volatility stance. And, and the implied volatilities can and will move independent of one another. So we're not, you know, just because it has a positive vega, which all long time spreads will have, doesn't necessarily mean you want implied volatility to go up because typically implied volatility, when it changes, it changes more in the short term option. So you, you have a positive vega and if implied volatility goes up and it goes up more in your short term option, you'll actually you'll actually lose money <laughs> because, um, you know, I, on, on the vega component, you'll actually lose money because. We can't look at the net vega. We, yeah. you know, we have to look at e the vega of each and the implied volatility change of each option. Yes, you know, 
<laughs> that's what is so challenging for people out there. And of course, you have a position on now, where as Dan mentioned, you're typically long Vega, but the Greeks can be misleading. Uh, you are definitely going to be short gamma because you're selling that front month at the money call option in this case. So let's start there. A typical time spread when you're going to put it on, what do you want to happen? Well, there's a couple of things you could like to happen, obviously. You're hopefully buying a volatility level that you think will go up and the volatility level that you're selling will go down. So that spread will widen and hence you will make money. But in a very basic scenario, since you're selling that at the money front month option, or you could do this in the weeklies as well. You could buy two weeks out, sell one week, whatever the case may be. That's a a common use case. Now we have dailies listing in the indexes. So it's not going to be long before we start seeing a lot more time spreads intraday, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever the case may be. So uh, there's a lot of ways you could use time spreads. We're just keeping it to the very standard monthly for now to avoid confusion. So in your basic scenario, you're going to buy that spread, you're going to spend 50 cents in ours. And what you're going to hope at the bare minimum is that even though you're long ball, again, it's confusing, you're going to want that underlying to kind of hang out and not do a lot during the lifespan of that front contract. Because again, you are short premium there. You are short gamma. So wild whipsaws in that underlying are not exactly what you want traditionally. So Dan, in those types of environments, let's say you put the calendar on, you get what you want in this scenario. The underlying sits right at your short strike for the entirety of that first month. So you get maximum decay. And that option that you sold for 50 cents now goes out at nothing. So what do you like to do in that environment? You now have this second leg on that you put on for 50 cents. What do you do with it? Do you close the whole time spread out as a unit? What, what do you tend to do from there? Well, one of the tenants, uh, the, one of the market taker mentoring tenants of good option trade management is, um, is whenever you have to take action on a trade, which could even include just simply looking at a trade, you know, you always have to consider it being a brand new trade. So you, so we always want to, when we're faced with a decision like that, we always want to sort of reevaluate and look at, um, basically reevaluate the forecast, look at where we are now, forget what position I have on and forget what position I had on in the past. What do I think will happen over the next two weeks or, or what have you. And and then consequently, what position would I like to have on? Um, if the answer is, well, you know, looks like we might break out of this range, then I don't want a time spread on. I just take the whole darn thing off. Uh, if the answer is, gee whiz, I don't know. I'm g- just getting a, a lot of like cross signals here. Then I also... Um, would probably just take the time spread off. But if I look and I'm like, wow, you know, we've been in this range. It looks like we'll continue in this range. What I love to do then is I love to to roll if I can. You know, if I've got, like if there's weeklies and I bought a two-month option and sold a one-week option, you know, I can just... I can just buy back that short one for a, a couple of pennies and then sell the next week option for, you know, 50 cents or a dollar or whatever it comes out being. One of the other questions we get a lot with time spreads, Dan, is when should I use these things? People can usually understand when they want to put on, let's say, a vertical call spread or a vertical put spread, or when they want to just buy a call or a put straight up or sell those. They understand those use cases. They're a little bit more iffy on when they should be thinking time spread. So for you, Dan, when you're looking at setups out there, what is an ideal setup, an ideal scenario? You say, bam, I want to go time spread right now. Well, there's a few things. Uh, So the most important thing is clearly that the stock stays in a range. Uh, I, I guess I should back up just a little bit on that. We can set up directional time spreads, but for me, like the quintessential just sort of average time spread is is your sort of neutral time spread where I'm buying and selling the at the money option and I plan for it to stay in a range. So that's the first thing that I look at. Um, You know, does it look like this stock will stay in a range, stay pretty close to this strike over the period I'm considering, which is usually about a week. I like to do weeklies with these. The second thing is, if I sell it, you know, what's my theta? Am Am I actually getting enough profit on a daily basis and on a total basis to compensate me for the risk of being wrong? 
And then the third thing is I always want to look to see if there is a what we call a, a favorable term structure of volatility. If I'm buying one option and selling another, I always want to buy the option at a lower implied volatility than the option that I'm selling. And presuming that there's no expected volatility events like earnings or a big Fed announcement or something like that, that will, which is another thing I need to look at, that's another criterion, that will provide me with an edge every single time by doing that. It's like, I like to say it's like buying low and selling high at the same time. Yeah, it's very, very counterintuitive to a lot of people to buy a spread and want nothing to happen. I'm hard pressed, Dan, to think of any other examples in the options world where you're buying something and you want nothing to happen, right? Very rare <laughs> does that happen. But that is the standard use case for your traditional calendar. Like Dan said, you, you want nothing really to happen in this underlying, at least for the lifespan of that front short leg there. And once that hopefully decays to zero, or most of it at least, you can take what you made there and put that to work on other legs. Maybe you roll into a vertical from there. Many other things you could do, take the whole thing off. But that's the initial thing that a lot of people have problems with. I Looking at this underlying, I think it's not going to go anywhere. I want to buy something. That's not usually the way people think. So it takes a little bit of a logical leap to get there. And I understand, listeners, why it's kind of hard out there. Also, we mentioned before term structure. This is also going to be a key to when you're setting up your time spreads. And it's one of the reasons why earnings time is one of the most popular times for time spread. I know Dan has a whole session and course there about earnings time spreads, because that's the moment where for a lot of you out there who are trading single name options, that's where you're going to see the biggest changes in the term structure is around earnings. Think about term structure. Obviously, if you're not familiar with that term, listeners, term structure is just effectively graphing the at the money volatility of the different expiration months in your typical name. Let's say Apple, you know, you can look at front month, maybe it's at 50, then, you know, two months out, you're going to go 58. And you chart that over time, you could see where the different months are lining up. And that's called the term structure of a particular name. And ideally, what you're looking for in these types of environments is for the contract you're buying, so the month you're buying, to hopefully be underpriced from a vol perspective. So you want that vol to go up. And the contract that you're selling you want that vol to come crashing in. <laughs> so that's, again, another setup out there. And usually earnings are really the time when you're going to see those types of big bubbles. If you go pull up any name you're trading right now and look at this term structure on your broker, you're going to see a bit of a blip on one of the expiration months. Chances are that's going to be the earnings announcement month because that's a month when a lot of uncertain things can happen. So you're going to price in a little bit more juice. So when you're coming into time spreads, earnings are usually a great place to set them up. Dan, is that your predominant use case for time spreads in and around earnings, sir? Yeah, very much so. Well, I mean, in fact, and I think we talked about this on the show, um, that's one of Market Taker's main programs is trading earnings by using time spreads. It's, uh, it's our class called Total Earnings Domination. We've got a whole system around it. And, and yeah, that's basically the gist. Like, if I were to, you know, like, like it's a whole program, we've got like a hour and a half boot camp, and then there's like five live trading sessions, and there's a spreadsheet that you fill in that makes it super easy. But if I had to describe it in like one minute elevator pitch style, yeah, that's it. You know, like right before earnings, you uh, I, when it meets certain criteria, you don't want to do this all the time, but when it meets certain criteria, you want to buy the time spread. And I tell people literally in the last hour of the day, um, because then you eliminate any gamma losses that can happen. And, you know, the, what you're looking for is you're looking for the instances, which is not uncommon, that the front volatility, the front option volatility, which is the one that expires immediately following earnings, that often gets overpriced very overpriced in some cases, and the back option usually gets only a teeny bit overpriced. So you end up putting on this trade that can be very, you know, the word that I use all the time is that has edge, but just the way to think about that is it has a statistical advantage. Not every trade is going to work out because you have negative gamma, um, and for those who are new to options, all that means is that big movements hurt. 
And you're expecting a big movement going into earnings, but it's just that if it's too big of a move, an unexpectedly big move, and we have ways to measure the expectations for that, that's when you run into trouble. So it's it's a uh, it legit is my favorite strategy to trade time spreads uh, on earnings. Uh, I love it. it I, I just love it because it's just so mathematical. There's there's no guessing. There's no uncertainty. It's just pure. It's just a pure edge play. Yes, obviously, earnings are a good time to do it. Obviously, also when you're doing it around earnings, that's also when you could have. Uh, the big movement, which is what you don't want in the front month. So that's something you need to be prepared for going into an earnings announcement. If you have a massive ball crush, but also a massive movement in the front month, that could be dangerous. So make sure you understand what we're talking about here before you start slinging earnings-related time spreads out here. Maybe check out Dan's course. Could be a good refresher for you on that. Now, Dan, we had this question a couple of episodes ago. It's worth kind of touching on right here as well. Time spreads, your basic, you know, you go out a, a couple of months, you buy the at the money call, you sell that front month at the money call. It's your basic use case for a time spread. We're not going to talk about doing it the other way at all. Sell two months out, buy the front month for reasons we touched on in the past. It's not that common of a trade. For retail, it is extremely difficult to margin that trade because your broker is going to treat it as you have this short contract two months out. The near-term contract isn't going to get you much margin relief in that. And it's also just a mind-blowing type of trade for most people to wrap their heads around. So we're going to avoid that one for now. Maybe we'll do a, a deep dive episode down the road on this extremely rare type of trade. But that said, Dan, there is a more common flipping of the script with the calendar trade, and that is your diagonal. And there's a million different ways to do diagonals. Uh, we've talked about them before in the stock substitution vein. Brian likes to call those the fig leaf where you go out, let's say, six months or a year, buy an in-the-money call, and then you offset that by selling much narrow dated out-of-the-money contracts against it. And over time, you try to offset some of the outlay. You can do that the way we just set it up as well. Just go out two months, let's say, buy an at-the-money call in your whatever contract, XYZ. Let's say, in this case, the at-the-money call is 50 cents, and you turn around and sell let's say a 10% out of the money call in the front month for 25 cents. You're knocking off half of your outlay right off the bat. Dan, is that your typical common use case for your diagonals? You're kind of using the narrow dated contract to chip away at the longer term one. What, what is your typical use case for a diagonal, sir? Yeah, so for, for diagonal, I mean, diagonals can technically be structured in many, many different ways. You know, you can do them with puts, you can buy at a higher strike, so the lower strike or vice versa, so many different ways to do it. But for me, the typical way to do it is what, you know, what I call the poor man's covered call, where I basically it works best when a stock really falls hard and the front volatility gets really jacked up. And then I buy an and if I expect the stock to make a slow, steady recovery over, you know, months, I'll buy an in the money longer term, maybe six month in the money call, and then I'll sell a shorter term, like maybe even a one week out of the money call. So it, it, it's kind of like the long call is a stock substitute and the short call is it's almost like a covered call. Yes, it's almost. The key word there is almost. And if you're intrigued by this strategy, listeners, I encourage you. First off, if you're listening to this show, you should be listening to Options Playbook Radio. It is very much the sister program to this. Brian does a lot of great education there, including on this particular strategy. Like Dan likes time spreads. One of Brian's favorite, if not his favorite, is the fig leaf, which is doing exactly that, going out six months or a year, buying an in-the-money contract, typically like a stock substitution play, and then selling nearer term out of the money contracts against it. Now, Dan says it's like a covered call because it's like it, but it's not. So if you have a covered call, if you buy the stock, you sell an out of the money contract against it, you're covered. You have the shares to cover that short call. In this scenario, in this typical diagonal use case, and this is how I typically, if I'm going to use a diagonal, this is probably how I use them as well. It's a very common use case, buying longer term contracts, selling the nearer term one to pay for it. Just bear in mind, you are not covered. So if you get close to that out of the money strike, let's say in our case, we bought the two month out at the money call for 50 cents, and then we sold that one month 10% out of the money call for 25 cents. You say, great, I cut my outlay in half. You have to have a plan in place for what you're going to do when you rally to that short strike because you are not covered. You don't have shares of the underlying. You don't want to exercise 
that longer term call for all the reasons we've said many times, exercising an option like that, you're going to give away all the time premium that is left on that option for nothing. So that's not a thing you want to do. So have a plan in place, whether it's to roll or do something else, because you might be hearing from your broker if you get there on expiration and and things can get a little wonky. So if you're doing this, it's called a synthetic or a poor man's covered call for a reason, because it is really not a covered call. You are not covered. So have a plan in place if you're going to do these basic diagonals for what you're going to do when the options reach that short strike. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for our quick refresher on all things time spreads. Uh, And, of course, diagonals. We have done more on this in the past. If you want deeper dives, longer episodes all about this, how to use them, how to put them on, how to take them off, the Greeks, etc. Dive into the archives. Hey, they're a great place to be. I encourage you, when you're, if you're new to this show, or maybe if you have been listening for a while, but you haven't checked out all the archives, get in there. There's great stuff in there. There's nearly a decade's worth of free education. You can't ask for anything more than that. We did just recently remaster that first episode for all of you out there who were discovering. And it was kind of fun for us. I haven't listened to it in a while. Uh, we remastered it, made it sound a little better, got rid of some of the elements that are no longer relevant, like talking about the Zecco platform, for example. They don't exist anymore as a brokerage, so we got rid of that. So we're probably going to start doing that with more of those episodes as well, maybe making some new fun remastered type feeds for all of you out there. So look forward to that. And of course, before we go, if you want to learn more about time spreads, I do encourage you check out Dan's course over there at Market Taker Mentor. And it is pretty much his bread and butter over there. That's pretty much what they do. It's all time spreads all the time. And if you have questions about this, and how could you not? It's a very strange, very esoteric type of strategy of two juxtaposing positions. You're long, you're short, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. If you have questions about that, hit them up over there at Market Taker Mentoring. That's going to do it for this week. For all of you in the secret club, we'll be back instantaneously, immediately in your ear holes with a huge mail call palooza for you folks in there. If you're in the live chat, you have questions, hit us up. We'll make sure to work you onto the show. For everyone else on demand, you're going to have to wait a week for this next episode, but we'll see you back then with another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>